tenor weather forecast today. Today's forecast, a lot of sunshine, blue skies, marine clouds. Just a perfect day to go outside and relax. That's your forecast. We'll be right back. Yeah. Sunny days, sunny days, sunny days. No clouds in the sky, but again. Welcome back to another episode of The Social Beaches. I'm Kelly Bowling. I'm Carolyn Smith. And we're with the Coastal Estate team. We sell real estate along the Space Coast and down into Indian River County. So basically from Mims all the way down into Vero Beach. Mm -hmm. um, so if you have any questions about real estate or you're looking to buy or sell, give us a call at 321-422-2160. Or you can email us at hello at coastalestateteam.com. Yes. Yeah. So today um, we're going to start off with a little bit about our weeks. Yes. What we've been up to. We thought that would be fun to like, yeah. instead of just always like jumping right into it to do a little, to do a little fun. What have you been up to lately? Yeah. So Kelly, what have you been up to um, lately? Potty training. <laughs> a dog. <laughs> Not herself. No, or <laughs> no, or children. We're well beyond that. But we got a new puppy. Yeah. A little boxer puppy. So um, cute. He's very cute. He's very just cute. over. We need to just, insert picture here. I mean, like if they yeah, can put a picture of him I'll up. I'll put a picture of him yeah. up. Yeah. He's a little over 10 weeks old. And his name is Gunner, but we call him Gunny. Yes. <laughs> he's, he's so, so cute. cute. He comes to the office. Yeah. We brought him in a couple times. His whole uh, butt, like when his tail wags, you know how like oh, puppies, the whole back they walk, end. the whole back end is moving. Yeah. And he's got the little nub and it just yeah. kind of wags back and forth. <laughs> yeah. And he's, um, he's in love with our other two dogs. So and that's perfect. That is great. Now I will say that the other two are not necessarily in love with him. Yet. Chloe Yet. is the, she's the bigger one and she, she'll play, but then when she's done, she's done. Like leave me alone. <laughs> and he'll, he's learned how to jump up on the bed because we have the stairs for our Frenchie because yes. he can't jump, you yeah. know, so he climbs the stairs. But now he's learned to climb the stairs to get on the bed oh. and it'll be the middle of the night. And all you'll hear is the other dog is growling, like a low <laughs> growl. And I'm like, oh no, he's on the bed <laughs> and she's like not having it. But, you know, my husband's been getting up with him in the middle of the night when he has to go. Yeah, when he wakes good. up, he's like, we take him outside immediately and trying to learn like what's the best way to get him to potty so we have like a little doorbell on the back door and he's oh, taught yeah. him to, to run, run his nose hey, into that i'm telling you we had the it was like a it was almost like christmas bells it yeah. was like a kind of thing with a bell yeah and they learn same kind of idea mm -hmm. we're trying to teach the other two because they're so used to just scratching at the yes. door um and they haven't figured it out yet but it's funny because when they all three go outside and then if we're inside waiting for them to finish or whatever yeah. They, they let Gunny sit in the front of the pack and he will just incessantly ring the doorbell. He just runs his nose into it until somebody opens the door. We're like, we get it. We get it. We're coming. <laughs> My dog used to take, well, she still does. She takes her paw and she whacks it. Yeah. And it goes, it's on like a, you know, it's on like a, a fabric thing. Right. So it goes <laughs> like, if you don't, she'll start with the nose, but it's mm -hmm. like, if you don't come quick enough. Yeah. And then like, she's <laughs> like, hello, I wanted to go out. <laughs> That's so funny. Yeah. But yeah, so that's what I've been up to. Well, that's fun. Yeah. So we wanted to talk about, we've noticed in the comments on like TikTok, especially. Mm -hmm. Yes. But I've also seen it on some of the other platforms because we, we post our clips mm -hmm. and, um, I was, I started seeing, she sounds just like Abby Lee Miller. And I'm like, who are they talking about? And are they talking about Kelly? Right. At first I thought like, what are they talking about? And who's Abby Lee Miller? Um, Did you have to Google it? I had to Google it because yeah. I, I didn't know who Abby Lee Miller was. I've never watched Dance Moms for y'all who've watched Dance Moms. And then I was like, oh, they're not talking about Kelly. <laughs> they are talking about me. And it's because I do, I know I have a distinctive, unusual kind of cracky voice, nasally, whatever. Um, but I listened to her. I found like clips of her and I'm like, I don't think I sound like her. I don't think you sound like her But either. there's a lot of people commenting on the on the posts that mm -hmm. that are like this is the one I was talking about. She sounds like Abby Lee Miller tagging their, tagging friends, their friends. Yes, to yeah. hear me sound like Abby Lee Miller. They must be big Dance Mom fans. They must be. Because I've never seen an episode of that either. Yeah. Maybe that's the problem. Maybe that's why we don't think I sound like Abby maybe Lee Miller. we need to watch more of it. Because <laughs> I just watched a couple of clips of her and I'm like, eh, I don't think so. But I'm also looking at her and I'm like, I, I don't I don't think we, we look alike and I don't think we sound alike. So they, they weren't saying I look like her. They were saying I sound like her. So I would like to know, do you all think I sound like, and is that a good thing? or a bad thing. <laughs> well, I mean, I don't know. How can we crit critique somebody's voice? Like that's... I don't know. Someone God gave me. Yeah. Yeah, I'm stuck with it. 
Yeah, you know when like, you were a kid and you used to yeah. like record yourself on oh, the tape and you never recorders, never sound like yourself. And you're like, who is that? Is yeah. that what I sound like? I always hated the way I sounded. Every, I think everybody did. Yeah. But now we're so used to hearing ourselves because of like social media and things right. like that. We like know that that's what we that's sound like. That's just who we are. Yeah. <laughs> And I always knew I had a weird voice because people would come around the corner at the store and they're like, I heard you. How did they hear me? How did they know it was me? It was me, yeah. Yeah, so whatever. Um, Well, I guess moving on to our topic. Greener pastures. I don't know, is it? (laughs) (laughs) We have a not so awesome topic for today. And I think it's just, you know, the reality that mortgage rates are right now and what it has done to the real estate market specifically here. Mm -hmm. I know it's happening all over too, but buyers are kind of like sitting on the sidelines right now. They're, they've kind of decided I'm going to take myself out of the game. I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait for these rates to improve Mm -hmm. or prices to come down or both. They're, I think they're a little shell shocked. They're, they're running their numbers. They're saying, you know, when I started looking maybe a year ago, I was looking at a $500,000 purchase. Mm -hmm. And now the monthly payment on that is quite a bit different than it was a year, year and a half, two years ago, really. Yeah. Two years ago, for sure. I mean, you're looking at like a 5% Mm -hmm. swing increase. Yeah. That's a lot. Yeah. It's a lot. And, um, you know, I, I do believe I I saw somebody else talk about this and I had to think about it for a minute, but I do believe, you know, the one thing that, that can change or probably will change eventually, no one thinks this is going to happen tomorrow, but in the future, maybe within maybe a year down the road, interest rates probably will start to come down. So that's the one thing that will change. Um, But because we have such low inventory, because Florida mm-hmm. is a state that people are relocating to, because we have a lot of jobs here, right? the job market's very good here, you're going to continue to see people come and you're going to continue to see a shortage of inventory. So the prices probably are not going to come down. They've moderated. Yes. They're sort of sitting. They're yeah. not moving. They're just kind of stagnant right now. They're so, stagnant. Yeah. But I think, you know, the choice, if you look at it, well, I can buy now and I can at this price and this interest rate. And then when the rates go down, I do have the option, you know, whenever that happens, if it's a year, if it's two years, whatever, I have the option as long as I can afford the payment now. Now, Yes. That's what you have to adjust to. So that might mean that you have to adjust your price point and Mm -hmm. what price point you're looking at. And that may change what neighborhoods you're looking at. That's correct. That may change the type of home you're looking at. Like maybe you really thought you wanted a pool and now like that's out of the, you know, that's off the market for you right now. Maybe you have to look at a non-pool home or, you know, maybe less bedroom or a little bit less 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 square footage. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So you have have to think about that. Pick what's most important to you, I feel like, and kind of curate your list a little bit and then see what's available in those price points. So, yeah, because really, if you think about waiting, the thing is, so you wait and yes, maybe interest rates will come down a little bit, but you're going to pay more for your house. Definitely. And the thing is, is that well, you could have gotten that lower interest rate by refinancing. Mm-hmm. You know, at some point you can run the numbers to make sure re- refinancing makes sense to you. Right. But you can you can do that. And then that lasts the term of your loan. Mm-hmm. But we're not going to be pulling these prices down. I just don't see, we just don't see the inventory. Right. We have active buyers looking for homes and condos and townhomes. Yeah. And honestly, we're just sitting here waiting for things to come on the market. We're doing mailings. We're contacting people who live in those neighborhoods saying, do you know anyone looking to sell? Right. Because these people want to buy. These are people who are like, okay, I, I've adjusted an interest rate or I'm paying cash mm-hmm. or whatever it is. And they can't buy because there's no inventory. Right. There's nothing so for them. we're yeah. in a very odd I would say an odd market. It is an odd market. So I feel Mm -hmm. like, you know, we are still seeing about the same number of closings and things like that, that we were. And it's not that people are listing less. I don't feel, you know, buyers have slowed down a little bit. So that's kind of built our inventory up from what it was, but we're still nowhere near a balanced market and inventory, you know, still nowhere near it. No. And, and as a buyer, this is your opportunity where you couldn't do it before to negotiate. Yes. Yeah. Ask for repairs, ask for closing costs, get a lower price. Mm-hmm. You can you can get contribution, seller contribution to buy down your interest rate if that's important to you. Right. These things you can do, which yeah. you could not do before. So you, you do have more opportunity. And I think there are some sellers who are still very stuck, stuck on there, especially ones who 
in the last couple of years purchased. So mm-hmm. when they were buying, everything was nuts mm-hmm. and they, they, their head, their mindset. Yeah. And is they are still, thinking, well, you know, they've set a price and then they get, maybe, maybe they get an offer that's at their listing price, mm-hmm. but then they're like, well, that's not good enough. I was hoping I was going to get over ask. over ask. And where's all the other offers? Let's give everybody a chance to see it. Well, it's like, there's no other, no other offers on the table yes. right now. So, you know, what's wrong with this offer? You know, so you have to, some sellers do need to come back around to that. Or they do. also, you know, if you think about sometimes we work with sellers, you know, some months before they're ready to list because Especially of estate life circumstances. Sales. Yeah. Estate that. sales. I have a couple of those right now where mm-hmm. it's taken one of them. It took almost nine months to get it on the market. Mm-hmm. A lot has changed in nine months. And so we had to readjust our thinking. We were going to list at this price. Now we need to list at this price because because, you know, before we were a little, you know, pushing high mm-hmm. on that range, but it's not going to move. Right. You have that. to also look at the competition that's out there when you are mm-hmm. ready to list. And then even after you're listed, I feel like if nothing's happening, it's time to go back and reevaluate. Like what has changed? Is anything else in this area gone mm-hmm. under contract? You know, what is, what are the new listings coming on at price wise? So mm-hmm. it's just kind of like reframing your mind to kind of accept the new reality that this is how it is right now. Yes. And this may not be long term, but if you can just find something that is going to work for you and your family for now at mm-hmm. a price that you can afford with the interest rates as they are now, then, you know, that's what you, you buy now before, because as soon as those rates start coming down, it's right. going to be a free for all again. It is going yeah. to be a free for all. And I say for sellers, I think, you have to do what's necessary now to entice buyers or before, you know, people were like, Oh, well, I'm, I'm, not even, fixing anything. Yeah, I'm not fixing anything. I don't have I'm to paint do- before, mm-hmm. you know, come in. I Who can- cares about landscaping, none of it, curb mattered. appeal, yeah. um, staging, these types of things. You have to start thinking about how do I present my home in the best possible light? Right. Do I need to paint? Do I need to landscape? Should I be staging? Mm -hmm. And is it more important to declutter? Does the house need to be clean? Yes. Yes. And you know what else is really important? The photography is so important. I am still seeing awful awful We're cell, still phone seeing pictures. cell phone pictures um, and not the new iPhone. Cause I feel like the new iPhone, the pictures might be okay, but yeah. also you're not a photographer. So like you don't have mm-hmm. the proper lighting. You're maybe not taking the, we saw one yesterday, Kelly oh and I gosh. were looking and at like, it where it were literally they laying on the floor. It literally looked like the person was laying on the floor of the bathroom because it was like shooting up in the bath. That, like, that, that phone camera, whatever. Flip, yeah. the, it was definitely on the floor. It was on the, the floor. A million. And then you see the other ones that are way up high. Like they yes. got on a ladder and then they yes. looked down. They decided up or down was the best way to take those pictures. And it's, or you see the reflection in the bathroom mirror. You know what? Yeah. You're never going to have that happen if you hire the professionals yes. to take the photos. And the other thing that was interesting to us about those that particular house was it was priced so high. Oh, yeah. So here it is. Somebody came in, gave these people a ridiculous price. Mm-hmm. Oh, I can sell your home for this. You need to, as a seller, you yeah. need to vet the information you're being given by this person Mm -hmm. who comes in and says, I can sell your house for this price. Where's the numbers to back it up? Yeah. Where's the comps to back it up? Are you giving me real numbers? Is it the agent giving that number or is it the seller? It could be the seller. Yeah. It could be the pie in the sky. Yeah. 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 It could be. Yeah. I have a seller who I adore who told me, well, we're going to wait for season. And I, I, you know, people don't come at season and go, oh, I I don't care about comps and I don't care what the market's doing. I'll just open my wallet and pay whatever. That's not going to happen. Season doesn't matter. Even cash buyers don't want to overpay for a house. No. Yeah. So the interest rates aren't important to them. Did they become unsavvy because they have cash? No. No. (laughs) Did they lose their... Definitely not. It's still an affordability factor. Nobody Mm -hmm. wants to be upside down in their investment. No. So, I mean, would you want to be? No. Yeah. What's the thing you always tell people? Don't be the highest bidder for your own house. Yeah. You know, are you willing to buy the house for the price that you're, you're turning down? Would you pay? You're saying you want more. Would you pay that for your house? Really pay that. Mm -hmm. Not just like, oh, of course I would pay that. And you get, would you, when you really think about it and you look at what else is out there and you look at your finances, would you pay that for your house? And, and most of the time the answer is no. Yeah. 
Yeah. Anyway, do we have any other fun news to talk about? I mean, it's it's a great yeah. time to be a to but to be a buyer to be it a is, serious because buyer. You have more options. You yes. have you know flexibility with negotiations and more negotiation. The, more the bad time power. is that there's not as much inventory. But if you're ready to go, mm -hmm. you know you find the right house. You you do. Yeah. It's a good time. You're gonna have less competition. You're not mm -hmm. gonna be involved in these situations where you know you're writing twenty offers before you can get a house. Right. As long as you're writing market yes. offers, you know? Yes. So yeah. don't be the low baller. Don't come in a hundred grand below ask when it's already priced at market value. Like that's probably not. And don't be afraid though either, because sometimes the house is priced really high. Right. And I always say, if you're offering, if it's a good offer mm -hmm. based on, on market value, go ahead and put it in. Yeah, for sure. You know, um, because maybe the person just put their pie in the sky number out there on the house. Oh, and I've if you're not some, giving a low ball number, I've seen some that, you know, started out pretty high. Yeah. I saw one last week that was like, I think they started out at eight fifty. It closed at 700. Yeah. And sometimes mm -hmm. you just have to be a little patient. If you like the house and you put the offer in and the person is not mentally there yet, the seller is not mentally there. You know, if you wait a little while, they might come around, they might come around, just let them know, Hey, we're still out here. Keep checking in. Yeah. So for sure. anyway, yeah. all right, well, that's it. We're going to have happier topics next time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> For sure. Um, so anything yeah, else? No, no give we'll us a call. See you next time. Um, email us. We would love to help you buy or sell a house. Right. Yep. Cheers. Cheers.